Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it the wall of worry because that's what the environment is right now. It seems like we've got a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unknowns. Fiscal stimulus just doesn't seem to get done, even though the Federal Reserve keeps calling for it very strongly. Vaccine availability is a big question mark. When is that going to happen? The election is a big question mark. Unemployment went up this week, higher than what was expected, and on and on. So, you know, the markets, there's an old Wall Street saying, says the markets climb the wall of worry. Well, we got a wall of worry. And so far, every time the market seems to uh, fall out of bed, it just snaps right back up. It refuses to do it. And it's had a few opportunities to do that. If we zoom in, what we're looking at here is the chart of the Dow Industrials. We're going to focus on the Dow this week, uh, this weekend. Uh, if you look at this day here, I talked about this last week, where the market had a chance to fall out of bed when the, the president had those tweets in the afternoon and everything collapsed. The next day, it just gapped up and it, you know, it started rallying overnight. We continued to push and let me just zoom in here a little bit. Here's what happened on Monday. Okay, we gapped up on Monday and we sold off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Kind of had a reversal type candle here on Thursday and gapped up and rallied on Friday, although we gave it back in the last two hours of the day on Friday. But we continue to trend to the upside. Now, if you look at the weekly view, let me see if I can just pull this over here. You see what I'm talking about. It was really kind of a pause week. Little doji candle in here. We uh, were up 19.41 on the Dow Industrials for the week after a two-week move. So right now, we're just kind of hanging in here. And the real test is going to be, what is this number, if you're, at, if you're wondering? That is the Fibonacci level that we're at. That is the closest and most recent Fibonacci level on the Dow Industrials. And uh, we seem to be struggling. We've gotten above it a little bit earlier in the year. And then it's, it just seems to be a little bit of a form of resistance. We'll see how much and for how long. Uh, so now the real test is, do we push above the interday high of September 3rd? Or do we come back down and start selling off in here? I am leaning short term. I am leaning, as I said last week, into the fact that the market looks like it wants to continue to climb to the upside. Okay, so I am short term bullish. I am not bullish long term. Okay, so let's take a look at the, well, actually, I was going to look at the LA Wave picture, but I want to show one more thing just for some perspective. Now I'm going to zoom back out on this. Now let's compare this view to the uh, transportation uh, index, the Dow Transports. Look how they're climbing in here. Now this dash line, that is the all-time high. When did that occur? That occurred in September of 2018. Okay, It wasn't February or earlier this year, January, February. It was September 2018. So finally, they, they climbed to new all-time highs, but they were pushing strongly this last week. So it's going to be interesting. Are the transports leading us higher or are the... Dow Industrials non-confirming. You know, so far they're non-confirming, but we'll see if they're going to continue to push in here uh, like I am expecting. So if I take a look at the LA Wave picture, here's what I think is happening. I think we had this very big expanding triangle. I've talked about that for Wave 4, uh, this big ABC move, and that we are in a, a push, push here for Intermediate Wave 5, that's going to complete the fifth wave up and it'll complete the fifth primary wave of the fifth cycle wave. So, yeah, you know, longer term, I'm not bullish, but shorter term, I'm still looking for a final push to complete this wave. So I think we're in minor wave four. And let me zoom in. There we go. And here's what we're looking at. So uh, I we're looking at five waves right now. I'm labeling this third minute wave as finished right here at the October 12th high, which was Monday. And I'm just a little bit uncertain about it. I mean, it could be because it's fairly short. It's about equal to wave one. It's just fractionally higher than wave one. Uh, but it could easily turn into be a stronger move. 
So just watching to see, I've got these dashed lines in here for the highs and lows of this last week. And uh, honestly, we need to continue pushing higher. If we come down to take out this low, Thursday's low, then something else may be going on. So right now, my expectation for this to continue to uh, be confirmed is that we push above Monday's high and could keep pushing in here. Then we'll have to look to see just what do we have in terms of the wave structure. Is this wave three really done or is it, uh, you know, going to be unfolding even stronger as we push higher? So what I'm going to want to see as we start to get these advancing days, going to want to see that breath hang in there, okay, in terms of advancing and declining issues. Okay, that is the picture there. Let's take a look at the high yield bond fund. Here's what's happened here recently. I think the last time I talked about this, looking back at my notes, was the last time I talked about the Dow Industrials, which was September 26. So where was that? That was right after this. Here's Friday the 25th. Yeah, so it was right after this. So we'd been getting pretty strong risk-off type signal here on HYG, and then all of a sudden it started to turn. And we got a couple closes above the 10-day moving average, and it just kept fighting back. And, you know, finally it then took out the highs here, at least intraday. Now we've had a little bit of a pullback, but so far it seems to be in sync with the market. So I'd have to say right now, what is the high yield bond fund telling us? I'd have to say it looks like it's saying risk on with the market. Okay, so that is, that's the message that it's sending. Okay, I want to look at the put to call ratio in here. Okay, the equity put to call ratio. Again, this is just on stocks, equity only from the CBOE. 47 puts for every 100 calls. It keeps that 10 day right in the 40s, right at 0.44. It's been dropping back down again. So just when we thought we were coming out of this, maybe in terms of getting a little more put action, no, the, the bullish extreme and the bullish sentiment just keeps coming back in. It's just been incredible. incredible. Now, when you look, these days I've got highlighted here in purple, or I'm partially colorblind, so I assume that's a purple. Uh, <laughs> and uh, in the 30s anyway, let's put it that way. Uh, one thing I want to point out, I've got data back to 2006, okay? From 2006 to 2019, and actually even through the month of May of this year, there were only six days that we had readings in the 30s, a one-day reading in the 30s, six times in, in all those years, okay, all the way through May. Since June 8th, we've had eight of these. That's the kind of bullish extreme that's just been going on in here. You could see how they happened in August and, uh, and back here in June in July. You know, and then the extreme activity. Here's the first one in June 8th. That's the first one this year. You know, we had this kind of extreme readings up at the top in January, February, but we never got any kind of one day like this. And I know I've talked about this before in terms of the, the uh, length of these instances of very extreme 10-day readings in here. And here we are starting again. We've had eight days in a row of 10-day readings down in the 40s again. So the extreme bullish sentiment just continues and just reinforces the fact of we are at a, you know, a major cycle wave. OK, I want to take a look at Apple as an update, because the last time I talked about Apple was on August 29th. So let me pull Apple up. Let me grab it down here. Here we go. OK, so this is the moving average view that I've got with my indicators here on Apple. So when we look at where's uh, the 28th, let me get my crosshairs here. OK, so here's the 28th. So if Saturday the 29th would have been right in here. And then uh, I talked about it. I was very bearish on, on Apple. Uh, I still overall am bearish on it. Short term, I think we may have uh, another push to the upside, and we'll talk about that in a second. So let me just go to the uh, Elliott Wave picture in here, and let me zoom back out. Okay, so this is the bigger picture. I felt we are in an, uh, this last wave uh, 
the fifth intermediate wave was an expanding ending diagonal pattern. I felt like that looked pretty clear. We got a throw over to the upside in here on the triangle. And then we, uh, the next week after the video on the 29th, we pushed a little bit higher, but then we came back down pretty hard. But when I look at this, this just doesn't look like a five wave move to me. This looks like a three wave move. OK, so right now that's got me on alert for a flat pattern in terms of corrective pattern. Could be a triangle, but given the degree of correction that I'm looking for in here, I just not sure that a, a triangle fits this scenario. But one thing about corrective patterns, they can become very complex. So right now, you know, we're trying to just do one wave at a time. We've got three waves. I'm looking for another three wave move to the upside. And here's what I think is unfolding so far. OK, so here's the here's the bottom right here. Here's where wave A, intermediate wave A ends in here. Three wave move down. And now I think this first wave right here was a little five wave move for A. Then we're going to get a B right here. Let me let me give it a little bit more space. The problem I've got is that my data vendor when Apple split they split the daily, but they didn't split the intraday. And so it's just, it's been very aggravating anyway. Um, so here's what I'm looking at right here. This is the direction. Here's what I'm, where I think this is going to go. So in this little move for a wave for the B intermediate wave, I'm expecting an A, B, C. We'll see if that plays out. And again, when you get a B wave, it can be a variety of patterns in here. So right now we're just watching to see if this starts to uh, turn and break to the upside. Again, expecting a C wave to be either a five wave or an ending diagonal pattern of some kind. But then the expectation is that that push would come back up to the beginning of this A wave, back up here. So where where is that? Back up around one, you know, one thirty seven. So at least ninety percent would be around one thirty four to one thirty five. OK, so that is the expectation. That's what I'm looking for. And then where do I think is going to happen after we did that? Then I think we're going to get a much bigger, much stronger five wave move down for C wave OK, as a part of a corrective pattern. And that could then very well be when we start to correct this bigger wave. That's why I've got wave four down here. Now, don't sit and look at this and go, oh, Joe's thinking wave four by January, February. No, this is just a placeholder. I'm just putting it down in this area because this is the direction I'm expecting. But one wave at a time, we don't even have this uh, this second wave up to the upside yet complete. OK, so that's the picture. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it the thumbs up. If you're uh, not a subscriber to the channel, get that little hit that little subscriber button. If you'd like more of this kind of information, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website and check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.